Welcome to Activate Yourself with Gita Sidhu Rob, where we feature otherwise normal people who, because of events in their life, have turned left and done unusual, inspiring, incredible things like build a business, become a happiness expert, marry a prince, create an empire, or like your host, set up a health and wellness business, Nosh Detox. Here's your host, Gita Sidhu Rob. Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Gita Sidhu Rob. And today on Activate Yourself, which is the show where we put people who go through life, do their thing, do what they're meant to do, do what they're brought up to do, which is actually frigging a hell of a lot worse. And then something happens, several somethings happen, and they find themselves kind of suddenly turning left and thinking, uh, no. But these terrible experiences, you know, like when something really bad's happening to you and someone goes, oh my God, one day you'll see the benefit of this and you want to slap them. Sadly, you will one day see the benefit of that. And sadly, these terrible things actually do help you to find who you are. And I actually constantly have a prayer these days where I'm like, can I just learn that without the pain? Because I am so down to learn that without the pain. So today's guest is somebody who's going to be open and vulnerable and 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 really have conversations about and there's a very interesting line between vulnerability and victimhood I think because you know when you it takes an awful lot of strength to be calmly and comfortably vulnerable in a place where you're not being a victim and it's like oh woe is me oh my god my life really sucks um and today's guest you know, is, is one of those people that has had real life happen to her. She's had abusive relationships happen to her. She's had really bad surgeries happen. She's had a nervous breakdown. Um, and I think that a lot of that is kind of like the, the spectrum of journey for so many women that it's almost a norm. And, and I know that it sounds really controversial to say this, but I have never yet on any male feed seen, be resilient, you can bounce back. Whereas on women's feeds, it's all we bloody here. So uh, welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much for joining me. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, well with, with, with a story like that, um, <laughs> because what was interesting is that I said to you what happened to you and you were like kind of everything. So um, <laughs> what I find interesting about your story is that I work, I mean, I'm a coach uh, as well, and I work with a lot of women, but they really struggle to see that they have low self-esteem when they're very successful. And it's like, but I couldn't be this successful and have low self-esteem. And it's like, well, actually, I pretty much feel like your low self-esteem led you to being that successful, yes. right? And so there's a place yeah. where you found that you had low self-esteem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, massively. Massively, many, many times as well. Um, I think initially it was that, and funnily enough, I'm going to write about it today which is very bizarre, um, was the point when I actually went, enough's enough, and I actually went to the doctors and I had the diagnosis of stress, anxiety and depression, and I'm like, oh, thanks for that. And they, here's a prescription, go and do stuff you enjoy. And I was like, well, what? Because you didn't know. Because I did yeah, exactly, because I didn't know. And it was like, okay, I'll... I'll so I, I literally went into my local town and I just happened to see posters for a relaxation class and a Tai Chi class. And they were both starting that week. And I'm like, well, I'll do that. See if I enjoy either of those. And I did the Tai Chi for 18 months. So there was obviously something in that that I yeah. had to go through one thing to find the other thing. But it's that so many things have impacted on me that my confidence and self-esteem were literally through the floor and I just thought it was normal I thought it was just life I just thought oh this is this is what I'm destined to be do say think feel believe whatever why did you think that because I I, I struggle with the fact that I think women do think that I think women don't understand they think that yeah. but why did do you know what I mean because it's our upbringing mm -hmm. But when I say yeah. to women, but our upbringings teach us this, then I get yelled at because I'm yeah. like, oh, you're not a feminist. And I'm like, really? Yeah. It's, um, I didn't have, I had an extremely good upbringing. I was bullied at school. Um, I went into the corporate world 
at, at various points. I was in hospitality, I was in uh, travel, I was in uh, business, I was in facilities management, I was in all different things. And it was all that process and that system and that it was never about the people. It was always yeah. about the money, the bottom line, the other stuff. And I think I just became a robot. I just became a, oh, I've got to do this because so-and-so oh, says I've got to, or this is my job and this is, you know, I never stopped to think, well, actually, do am I, I enjoying it? Do I want to do it? Is it right for me? I never stopped to think about it. So that. let me stop you a moment, because this is a bugbear of mine. Why do you, do you think women understand that they don't know what they want because they're not trained to want? Uh, yes. <laughs> Did you understand that? Yeah. Did you know that? No, I no, I didn't at the t- at the time. I'm like, I don't, it wasn't until somebody said to me, "What do I enjoy doing?" that I stopped and thought, actually, none of this, none of this is is bringing me peace or joy or anything. It was so. Why were you doing it? Because you thought you had to. Yeah, yeah. All the time until I had my. Right. And after that, to be honest, because I went back, I went back to work and it wasn't until I had my hysterectomy and then I was made redundant that I started to see the patterns. And it wasn't until very recently that I actually noticed how much I was repeating those patterns. And I didn't think of it at the time until people had pointed it out to me. And I'm like, but I'm not repeating patterns. It's a different situation. It's a different job. It's a different bleh. But actually, it's exactly the same pattern. 100%. I feel like I married the same man more yeah. than once. They just have work kind of shorter, bigger, taller, thinner. It just makes me laugh that. I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Oh, again. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, yeah. I've done it myself. Said it myself. Jobs, relationships, everything. So let's talk about this because... <clears throat> This is, this is something I really, really care about. It's something I speak about a lot and I'm just really yeah. fascinated. Do we just go through life with really low self-esteem as a personal choice? Because now as adults, yeah. we're choosing this. Yeah. No one's now anymore making us because they've already put us into the mold and we're not breaking out the mold. Yeah. Why? How? What? <laughs> I know it's because no, I have my view I just want to hear yours I think it's we're so conditioned by society that it becomes the norm and I see with all the things that I do I see and I sense and I I know the people are following patterns I'm sitting opposite friends and I'm going you need to break this pattern you need to do this and I'll say something and they're completely on the defensive completely on the defensive right. and I'm sitting there going I can't help you because you don't see this you don't recognize it and you don't want to come out of that mindset you why? don't want to change why I don't know that's that that's the that it, it's that most women I speak to and some men I have to say are in that no I've got to do this I've got to do this I've got to do this and I'm like stop just stop you haven't got to do anything but we get into that, that we, we go against the flow, don't we? When we're like, no, society dictates that I have to do X, Y, and Z, and I have to do X, Y, and Z. And then, and you don't recognize it until you really start. For me, it wasn't working through it, it was standing back. Yeah. And then the thing that interests me about it is that it's we choose to perpetuate the treating of ourselves as second-class citizens in our own lives. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all a choice, isn't it? Do you think this is... Okay, we're going to go on a break, and then I want you to answer the question for me. Do you think that the understanding of this is age-related? Do you think it's harder to understand this when you're younger than when you're older? Okay? So we're going to go for a break. Okay. And then we'll be back. Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. good, good. 
So we're back. Do you think? I remember this quote that has really stuck in my mind. And it said, when you're young, as young women have privilege and no responsibility. And older women have responsibility and no privilege. No privilege. So do you think, because I'm speaking to a group of young women next Friday. And I want to talk to them about this and I'm like my daughters are like mama that's just not true or whatever and I I I wonder if it's an age thing it's a good point actually because I've not thought about it before but when I think about some of the young people that I work with I'm talking like sort of 18 17 18 year olds and I think of some of the older people that I work with or friends or whatever who can be my age maybe a little bit younger maybe older and their views of life, I think, are very different. And when you go back to upbringing and you do look at ages, when you think now that when I was born, we didn't have mobile phones. We didn't have mobile phones. But I don't know where they came in the 90s, was it? Yeah. Um, um, so I was 20, something like that, because I was born in 73. And I fight constantly to go back to the time before mobile phones and social media why because I think social media for me personally so I've just literally deleted my Facebook account it cancelled either yesterday or tomorrow I can't remember and I absolutely hated it and I'm sitting there going you've been on it since 2014 why have you carried on being on it when you don't like it So I came off it and the amount of messages I got saying, oh, my God, what are you doing? Why are you dropping? Your world's going to come to an end. How did they know? Well, exactly. Exactly. You've got to be on Facebook for business. You've got to be on Facebook for doing this. No, it's never bought me anything apart from probably stress and anxiety. And I felt physically sick scrolling through it the other day. And I went, enough's enough. Why did you feel sick? What was it about it that gave you such a visceral reaction? Um, it, it, there was just, a, I mean, this is like, this happens every day, doesn't it? There was just a post. There's a couple of posts. There was one that was somebody's dinner and there was one that was uh, an advert for high ticket coaching. I can turn your business into a high ticket coaching overnight and earn you a six figure, six figure salary. But, and I was like, oh my God. And I just sat there and I went, I, feel, I just think I want to be sick. And I just, I'd already decided to delete it. And I kept going back in and put a what post about the dinner? to messages. And I was like, I just thought, really? Have we not got anything better to do than this? What about the dinner made you, made you want to go? I'm fascinated. Just why? Just why? <laughs> why? Why have you posted your dinner? Yeah, exactly. Like, it really looks lovely. It wasn't the dinner. It was just the fact that it was there. And I was like, oh, God. And I know, I get I get it. I get the, um, I get what's behind it. It's it's the people buy from people. It's going, look, I'm sharing this with you. This is, I mean, I didn't read it. So it could have been them sharing a recipe for all I know. I just didn't get past the picture of the dinner. And I know a lot of people, you know, I yeah, I look on Google for, for recipes and things. And I'm just like, no, surely not. Oh, I'm going out. And I've taken a photograph of one, one dinner once when I was abroad because it really did look spectacular and it did taste spectacular. We didn't post it anywhere. And I'm just like, no. What, why, do we, why do we do? Why do we take the time out to take the photograph, to post it on social media? And then... On the reverse, why do people actually take their time out and comment on those things? And I'm like, what does it achieve? You don't think it's the connection it's achieving? No. What I do don't see it. it was? I don't okay, see let's it. Let's take another step here. What do you think a life well lived should look like? I think that's very, very individual. Um, and this is this is very strange because I was thinking about this the other day and we were talking, yeah. talking to somebody about homelessness. And I very nearly was. And I see so many around now. But there's also a lot of them that have got top of the range BMWs parked around the corner and then they're begging and they're not paying taxes. So there's so many, so many different things. Because you're going, well, I would love to help you. But 
you've probably earned more money than me, but I don't know. I don't yes, know. It's, it's hard. It's very hard. And it's that, and I remember speaking to somebody and their friend or somebody they knew had at one point been homeless. And their opinion of it was in the summer, because it, it did happen to them in the summer, they were absolutely loving it because they were out in the open, what they were mean? staring at the stars, they were in touch with nature. That's awful. Now, this was that person, the person who was homeless, this was their opinion. They were in touch with the stars, they were like, you know, because it was so warm, obviously, you know, in the winter, it's a very different story. And they were kind of at one with nature and their mindset of it and the way they viewed it was, actually, this is kind of a, a reset. This is a good thing in some ways, obviously not in others. But then you've got the, and they were happy to a I point. Just, I, yeah. I then you've say. got the billionaires who were like, well, I haven't got enough. They don't beg though. Don't they? Do well, they just do it in a different way? By posting these adverts. I don't know. It's one of those, isn't it? It's that, you know, my my ideal lifestyle would look completely different to yours. And my ideal lifestyle probably changes every day because I'm like, well, hmm, at the moment I'm living with my parents because of COVID. I came back, I was working abroad. So my house was rented out. And it's like, is this ideal? Well, no, I'm 49. I'm living with my parents. No, it's not ideal. But at the end of the day, it's a hell of a lot better than somebody who is homeless that's got nothing. But then it's their views on their situation and their choice that then we go back again to choice, don't we? And the choices that they make. And I did, I was talking to a homeless guy. Well, he sadly he's passed away now. He passed away while I was working away. And I was chatting to him in, in the middle of Birmingham. Um, and he was just like, you're the only person that's treating me like a human being since I've been on the streets. Because I was talking to him. And I said, well, why are you here? And what happened? And, you know, just a normal everyday conversation. And that, it wasn't there when I got back. And then he contacted me a couple of weeks later. And uh, he said, well, I've been to see those people. I said, I was going to see, and I've done this and I've done that. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And he did start to turn his life around and he did eventually get in a hostel but he said he went back on the streets because the hostel wasn't safe he felt safer on the streets i'm like that's just wrong yeah no it's very true what do yeah. you um and it's true i i think that the, the 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 kind of the moral behind that story is that actually seeing people is really important and one of the things that ties that together is that social media is a way um of being visual but not actually being seen yeah, because um yeah. you can yeah. you can you can mm. it's slate of hand isn't it you can see what it is that you want to see and mm. make it really different and it, it, it's a it, nobody can can gainsay that because you're there and you're showing what you want to be seen yeah so yeah. what is it that you teach people um and how is it you teach them to find their self-esteem for example by being themselves now it comes in diff for me it comes in different ways because I do a lot around writing not necessarily journaling because some I'm, I'm working with a lot of people who want to tell their story they want to tell it for two reasons which is the same as me they want to tell it to get it out which is part of their healing process which it was for me but they also want it to help other people and it's entirely their own you know it's it's their own journey I'm just kind of holding their hand and going well you can do it you do it in your way I wrote mine as a novel I now help people intuitively, so psychically, spiritually, intuitively with writing, however it is that serves them best. Coaching as well, that comes into it. A call, every single call is different because every person's needs are different and everybody's at a different stage. And people go, oh, can you fix me? Well, no. Can you help me do this? I can, yes, I can give you some guidance, but the outcome has to be up to you because it's your life not mine and I I fell down on this a lot myself because I was listening to other people and people would send me messages going like you know oh so and so you 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 the love of your life's not far away and you know your your ideal career is not far away and this and that and I'm like 
oh god and that and I'm like, oh, yeah, so I've got to do this. And several people have said different things to me, like, you know, have you thought about doing this? And have you thought about doing that? And normally, if I hear, when I hear that, I'd go, oh, yeah, 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 I'll let me do it. I'd go home and I'd start doing it. And I'm going, hang on, that's just what one person's feeling. There's a little bit of a seed there. You don't need to do anything with it particularly. So hang on, that's so interesting, because what you're saying is that, the muscle of making your own choice for your own good yeah. is the thing that's developing. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go for a short break and we're going to come back because my issue with this is this. I think women have never been told that they even have that muscle. Interesting. Mm, yeah. So we'll talk about that when we come back. We're just going to go on a short break. Okay. <laughs> Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Okay, so we're back. I'm um, I think that one of the reasons you struggled to mm. find that concept of your choice is mm. because as women, we're not told we have choices. Yeah. And so therefore, and all, all activity is a muscle, emotional activity, mental activity, physical activity, it's a muscle that the more you use, the more you have. Yeah. So one of the reasons you had to train yourself to stop and think is because your instinctive desire was pleasing. So if someone said yeah. something, you went, yes, so what is yeah. the opposite of that? Yeah, 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 very, very true. It's, I, I never, uh, I never considered myself a people pleaser. And then I actually stopped, I, I've done this again several times. And I'm like, I don't like Indian food because it upsets me, it upsets my stomach. Personal choice, I don't go to Indian restaurants. Well, you're screwed because it's our biggest, what is it, our national dish is some kind of friggin curry isn't it exactly it's like, oh. yeah i like it really and i know a lot of most a lot of my friends in fact i think all of my friends like indian and most of them would probably say that's my favorite meal and i'm like oh okay and they would go into it and i'm thinking i'm not enjoying this because like i would be having like just a plate of chips or so i know this is going back quite a while um and yeah, i know a lot of indian takeaways or restaurants or whatever do do english food the same as chinese that you know you can get pretty you can get anything anywhere can't you really in some ways but at that point i just went i don't want to do this i don't i'm not enjoying this or so i did stop it and it took a lot to say no i don't want to come out i don't want to go and then it was but you like didn't say, oh. i'm not going if you go to a chinese indian restaurant you said i'm not going yeah why that, that's want... where they were going and I, it was just like ah. oh we're going to this do you want to come and I said no and then it was like well they stopped asking me and I thought oh so they're not my friends anymore I'm going back a few years now I don't think like this anymore um, <clears throat> uh, oh they're not my friends they don't like me they don't want to be with me they don't love me they don't oh my god what am I doing I must go to this in yeah that kind of cycle and I look at it completely differently now but at the time it was just oh my I, I've got to do that to be in with those people well, I didn't have to, and I'm still friends with them. What did you do to make it different? You know, I was just, I think I was probably slowly starting to realise that actually by saying no to certain things that didn't bring me joy, that didn't make me happy, that I didn't like, actually gave room for things that I did. And I, I am going back probably more than a decade before I had my breakdown, possibly, but even then, that seed was planted. I just didn't know what it was because it was that, oh, God. And even my mum would say, well, why are you going if you don't like it? Why are you doing that? And I've just recently stopped doing some, or stopping doing some voluntary work. And I said to my mum and dad, I'm like, oh, well, I need to tell him I'm doing this. And she's like, it's your choice, you know. The word voluntary, look it up in the dictionary kind of thing. But it's the same with everything, isn't it? You don't have to do anything if you don't enjoy it. So what is it that 
do you feel you're now in a place where you don't have to think about it now? You just make choices for you? Or yeah. do you feel that it's the stopping and then taking time to think about it? That What's that journey of development? Um, trajectory? I think it's a bit of both sometimes. I mean, by actually stopping recently and doing virtually nothing, my creativity just took off, just started to flow to the point where I started writing a children's book. And within oh, two days, that. I've got four and a half thousand words. And I'm just like, oh, OK, this is a bit different. But I think that it's the it, it's it's a bit of both. It's that does that does that suggestion by somebody feel icky or does it feel good? Is it kind of worth pursuing? And sometimes it's an instant. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. That happened in my um, writing group last week. It was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. These people have got so many, pow such powerful stories to tell, men and women alike. And I'm like, oh, I can really see this, like, you know, this moving forward for people. And then somebody suggested something else. And I was just like, hmm, yeah, that, oh. Mm. It was kind of that, no, I do need to stop and think about that one and let that one sort of best, not fester, but develop Percolate. in the background. Percolate, that's it. If it's going to go somewhere, the doors will open up. If it isn't, then they won't. But it was almost that I'd got to act on everything that I heard. And now I just think, oh, no, maybe not. So what do you, so when people come to you, how, how do you, what's the first thing that you have as a conversation? What do you say? What do you start with? It will... It will depend. Um, if it's a reading, it just goes into a reading. And I don't do so many of those. Oh, are you are, you're an intuitive, as in you actually do readings. Yeah. I swear yeah. I didn't understand that. Yeah. We're at the end of this conversation and yeah. I didn't understand I do, that. I do both because I do. I do. I kind of backed off from that because the intuitive stuff comes into everything. And it's I didn't want to say I'm a medium and I do readings. And that's all I do because I work in a different way to what people expect from a medium. They go, oh, I'm automatically going to be connected to my great grandmother's auntie. And if you don't bring her through, you're not real. Yeah. And it doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, it really doesn't. It's like I can only get what I'm I can only give you what I'm what I'm what's coming through. And sometimes it's not spirit. Sometimes it's psychically. Sometimes it's I pick up on their energies and and I had a, a client a couple of years ago and she was in such a bad state I couldn't do a reading that session then was to calm her down and to do a a meditation with her almost and to do deep breathing exercises her energy was so wild and yeah. I just said mm -hmm. yeah you you've you a reading is not going to do you any good you need, you know, you've, it's starting from this point. So until I actually get on the call or get face to face with somebody or whatever, it's I can't I can't say I'm going to do this, that, and the other. It's all intuitive. It's all whatever comes. But I always ask that it's what they need, which obviously with any reading it should be, but also that it will give them something that they can take away and they can take action from. And I'm not telling them what to do. I will tell them what I can see, feel, sense, whatever it is. It's up to them then to go away and maybe think about it. Or maybe if something really resonated with them, that's the bit that they pick up on and go away and do something about. Um, and they might come back in six months time and go, wow, that really worked or wow, that really didn't. And then you go, well, OK. And you almost start again. But it's very... It's very different each time, um, but it's all, it's all intuitive. It's all I can, you know, and I've, I've kind of stopped messing, unless it's something that I feel really, really, this is dangerous and I really yeah. need to say to you, please be aware or please be careful. I still can't make that decision for you of whether you go down that path No, you just give the information yeah. and you have you to just give it. You know, as as I see, feel, sense, mm. whatever. However, it comes I love through. that. Thank you for a really interesting conversation. Yes, thank you too. That was different. How, um, how do people find you? 
My website is lisambillingham.com uh, and my email address is lisa at lisambillingham.com. I'm not on Facebook anymore, <laughs> uh, but all the others I am, I'm on, I'm on uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter, but I don't, <clears throat> I don't do as much on social media as I used to do. I was cramming it and I was getting nowhere and I thought just step back and and then hence the children's book so that's the next thing good Maybe. for you thank you very much Lisa for your time so thank this you, is Gita. the lovely Lisa M Billingham so if you thank want you. to work out how to step forward what you can and can't do you should reach out to her because there's a lovely calmness that's sort of present in Lisa, which I think that for many of us is something that we would probably benefit from immensely. Mm -hmm. My name is Gita Sidhu Rob. This is Activate Yourself. Um, you know, I always want you at the end of this conversation to get into a place where you feel hope and inspiration because hope is such a positive emotion, but very dangerous. Hope is that thing that when you feel it, you need to nurture it and, and really direct it because otherwise you stop hoping because nothing ever works. So I want you to hope, but along the hope, be inspired and understand that every place that you're coming from, there is a better place that you are going to. And it is inevitable, particularly when you raise your emotional um, awareness, everything else comes with it. So thank you very much for uh, listening. Please do like, subscribe and leave me a review and leave Lisa a lovely review because that would be fantastic. And I look forward to joining you all again. Thank you so much for joining us. Our goal was to give you pause, make you think about your life and inspire you to say, wow, what if I tried to do that? If they can do it, so can I. Did it work? Let us know by finding us on social media at Gita Sidhu Rob or at Nosh Detox. We upload new shows every two weeks here. And if you start to miss us, check us out on YouTube.